Hi guys, my name is Matthew Guerin, I am the Barber Coach and I'm going to be talking a bit about how I got into barbering and why I created the Barber Coach TV. So initially, I was a self-trained barber. I started off barbering because my local barber closed down. Everyone in our village went to him and when he finished barbering, um, uh, a lady took over and nothing against her or the fact that she's a lady but she couldn't cut hair. So my mother bought a kit and she thought she could do a better job and let's say that uh, she didn't do a very good job at all and I just thought you know I could do a better job myself. I still love going to the barber shop. I always ask loads of questions when I was there and um, I should really watch what he was doing and I don't know why it's it was just I just did I just enjoyed it and I probably used to do his head in asking him loads of questions and I used to look at the clock and I'd see like he'd normally take about 20 25 minutes on my haircut and I'd keep watching the clock thinking oh no it's nearly coming to an end because I just enjoyed it that much so when he finished and my mother had to go at uh, hacking my hair I just thought, uh, no, I got a good idea of what, what I like and I, I, I remember what he used to do, so I'm going to try and do it. So I started cutting my own hair and, you know, from trial and error, I obviously made mistakes, but I learned from them and I knew maybe this time I won't hold it this way and maybe I'll try holding it that way until I finally got to a haircut that I thought that I liked and that suited me. It probably <laughs> probably looked absolutely horrendous, but back then I thought I was chocolate. So I was I, I was I was so impressed with what I was creating i do patterns on my own head and i would just try all these crazy things but i loved it i really enjoyed it and um so i started cutting my brother's hair and then my dad's hair and finally friends would ask oh who's, who's cutting your hair then where did you get those patterns from and when i explained it was me doing it and, and they knew they could get a free haircut they all jumped on board so be, before i knew it by the age of 14 or 15 i was already cutting hair for a pile of my friends for myself for my parents well my mainly my dad I didn't do very good jobs of, of my mother's hair and my brother and um, I just that's how I started. But when I started cutting hair, self-taught, I never thought this is going to be my career. I just thought, oh, this is a handy little hobby that I enjoy doing and it gives me a reason to go and see my mates. And it was just fun. It, it was never an option to be my future career. That was ne that was never my goal. When I was younger, I thought I was going to be a professional rugby player. And if that didn't work out, I was going to be a fireman. You know, all the the typical kids' dreams. But not once did I think, you know what, I'm half decent at this, I, I enjoy it, why not be a barber? Because back then, I mean, I'm 35 now, I was 14, 15 then, that was a long time ago, 20 years ago. Barbering wasn't fashionable, it wasn't cool, um, it had the stigma behind it. You know, you, you say to someone, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm a barber, or I cut hair, and they automatically think you're gay. And not that there's anything wrong with that, you know, but back then, it, it was a stigma, unfortunately. So, you know, if you're a typical rugby player, you'd be like, oh, I want people to think that of me. So I just didn't go into it. I shied away from it. I just did it for my mates and kept it quiet. And it's a shame that that was the case because it held me back for so long. And it wasn't until I was 26, I think it was, that I actually went back to college to get officially qualified. So basically, long story short, I was cutting hair for my friends from a young age. And then I'd say, well, after leaving school, um, I went to go and work in a local builder's merchant uh, around the age of 18. I did quite well there. I was good with people. You know, I learned a lot of communication skills. So, you know, if you're later on in your career and you think, oh, I'm too old now to start barbering, that's not the case. And that doesn't mean that the stuff you've already done is going to be a waste of time because you learn so much from other experiences that you can bring to the barbering world to improve the services that you provide. So for me, working in retail and in the trade industry, you know, I learned communication skills. I learned to deal with situations under pressure. I learned to work with a team. I then built skills up in management and managing teams and then training teams. And this, those little experiences and skills is, is what's allowed me to kind of embrace the barbering world from, from a different perspective and use the skills that I've learned to create a different career and to reach other heights in barbering that most people don't. You know, most people wouldn't consider potentially having shops and managing teams or training people, becoming educators, competing, because I had a very competitive edge as a sports person. So it was important for me to maintain that competitive edge. So when I got into barbering and I heard that there was competitions that could be entered, I couldn't wait to get into it. So, you know, just because you've maybe started later on in life and you've had other careers, and but you'd love to pursue barbering as a dream, it's not too late. And, I, and I'd go as far as saying it's, it's never too late. You know within reason but i've trained people in their 50s 
loads in their 40s, you know, complete career changes, and they've gone to become really good barbers, really successful business people. And again, they've used the experiences they've had in their earlier jobs and embraced the skills they've learned from them to build a strong career in barbering. So it's never too late, but I'm going off track a little bit. So basically, when I work in builders merchants, work my way up as supervisors, then manager, area sales manager, going to the sales side of it, and I really enjoyed that. But alongside doing all that, I'm still cutting hair for my friends, still cutting hair for family, and I got to a point that I realised I couldn't do both forever, it was becoming too much. You know, I'd built a clientele at this point now, I was on a charge for my cuts, and I was working a professional job as an area sales manager, coming home from work at 6, 7 o'clock at night, and then cutting hair till 10, 11 o'clock at night for my mates, and it, it reached a point that I just... I couldn't do it anymore. You know, it, it became too much for me. And my wife said, you know, well, I, I said to my wife, actually, look, I'd, uh, I'd love to have my own business. I just don't know what I'm going to do. And she looked at me stupid, like, but you already have your own business. You cut hair every single night. You know, you have a clientele. And I just thought to myself, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, actually, that's something I could potentially pursue as a business. But it's still, it was still second choice. It wasn't something that I thought would be um, lucrative financially. Um, it wasn't something that I thought I could expand and potentially grow to a big empire. I just thought, oh, well, I suppose it'll be convenient to be my own boss and to cut hair, which is like, which was something I enjoy, so I'll be getting paid to do what I enjoy. And I could earn a little bit of you know, decent money. So yeah, I could pursue that, but I wasn't really taking it serious. So got to the point that I thought, you know, I need to be qualified to be a barber, which isn't necessarily the case in, in our current industry in the UK. It's not technically licensed, it's frowned upon, but if you are cutting hair to a good standard and you are following good principles, you don't necessarily have to be qualified to, to be self-employed or to work in a barber shop. But for me, I felt I needed to be qualified to be taken seriously. So at the age of 26, I then enrolled in a part-time barbering course in college, an NVQ level two in barbering. And I went there completely open-minded, had no idea what, what to expect. I didn't go there thinking, oh, I've already been cutting hair, I know what I'm going to do. I honestly went there thinking that I'm going to be useless and that they're going to think, I'm, you know, this is not for me. Because I only had myself to compare myself to. I mean, I hadn't worked with other barbers to know how well I was cutting. I just used to try things out and thought, yeah, well, this works or that doesn't work, I won't do that again. And just lived through trial and error, basically. But I had a good understanding of shape, and you know, I understood style. I liked hair; I took pride in my hair, so I knew how what hair needed to look like. And I just had to learn how to get it to look like that by trying different techniques, you know. So when I actually got to college, um, I realised everyone was in the same boat. Most of them were hairdressers who had to do the barber qualification just so they could qualify as a hairdresser. There were some men there who just wanted to be barbers, but they had not no record or no history in barbering apart from maybe the odd hacker they've done for friends or family like myself so i felt a bit more comfortable uh, initially when i applied for the course i was told i couldn't i couldn't work on the course because i wasn't currently either working as a barber or in a hairdressers or doing a, a hairdressing qualification at that time you had to have a basic qualification in hairdressing before you could pursue barbering but i, but I said look you know if anybody cancels it was a fully booked course if anybody cancels please let me know i'm, I'm very interested and I think it was a couple of days before the course actually started, I had a phone call from the college to say that um, someone's pulled out and there's a space for me. So I took it, I drove straight down, I paid the admissions fee, and I, and I enrolled. And it, it, it all, it, my life changed from there, basically, because I'd say the first month of the course, we were just doing lots of theory, learning health and safety, starting to understand longer hair, working with layers and sections, which I had no experience of. I was only doing clipper cuts all day. So that was, that was really good. I learned a lot from that. But then once we'd completed the longer hair uh, sections and assessments, all the other assessments were medium to short hair. And I, and I already had clients for every assessment I needed to, to qualify. So I spoke to the, to the lecturer and I said, look, you know, I, I've got models, live models that I could bring in to complete these different assessments. Can I just start bringing them in every week? Because we were meant to obviously follow a, a curriculum for nine months. But I knew that I could probably get this signed off in nine weeks. So I'd say probably within six weeks, I brought all the models in I needed to bring in to, to get ticked off, um, to get my assessment signed off, I should say. And, um, and I thought that was it. You know, they were, they were good enough. I passed. The, 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 the lecturers were happy with what they could see. And um, 
So I thought, look, you know, do I need to still be on this course? I've completed all my assessments. So I spoke to the lecturer and I said, look, you know, can I just call it a day now and at the end of it to get my certificate? And they pulled me aside and said, oh, look, to be honest, we wanted to ask you if you would stay on and become a lecturer because the next half of the course involves skin fading and pattern work. And none of us lecturers uh, know how to do that very well. We're completely out of our depth when it comes to barbering. We're all hairdressers and we don't know how to, how to actually provide quality skin fades. We're very old fashioned and you've proven that you can do it. And would you stay on to actually take the course? So that was a massive turning point for me. You know, I'm starting off on this college course not having a clue what to expect thinking i'm not good enough to be here i'm only cutting hair for friends and family and that's just because the local barber's closed what what am i doing here so to be asked then to stay on and actually become a lecturer and share my skills with all the other students and help them progress on the college course just blew my mind but i loved it and then it just grew from there it, it went from teaching to competing opportunities come up in the industry to compete and that competitive edge inside of me from when I was competing in sport, you know, it just meant I had to get involved. And in the first competition, I learned a lot. Uh, I finished second. And I think they just, they did that because they felt sorry for me because I turned up with a model with very long hair and a long beard and everyone else turned up with pre-prep models and didn't have that much work to do. And I didn't realize that that was the, a thing. So I turned up with a model that looked like I'd pulled him off the street, poor thing. <laughs> but uh, so I had a lot more work to do, but I finished second. And I just loved it. And then, and basically from competing and from then taking pride in my social media and really sort of showing people and getting my, my name out there, my work out there and showing people what I do and what I've done just because I loved it. I was then approached by Nearcut, the online booking app. And they asked me if I would trial their app for 12 months. They give it to me free of charge as a, as a bit of a guinea pig. And I could sort of tell them things that I, I, I would like them to change just to suit my business. And that allowed me to build a business. I was still using it from home while I was doing my day job. I was still working in a builder's merchant. So I'd turned a room in my house into a little barber shop. And I was advertising on social media and people were booking in. It was the first booking system in the area, in, in the country, as far as I know. Everyone was messaging me saying that this is so much easier and that they love the fact they can book. It, you know, it, it was a rare, it didn't matter to them that I was working from home and they were coming to a house for haircuts. They were just happy with the convenience of the booking system. So that also made my life a lot easier. And I was able to build a foundation and a clientele from there until it got to the point that I could leave my day job and then pursue opening my first shop. And now through hard work and through a lot of passion, I've built a little empire. I've got three shops, I've had four. Unfortunately, due to lockdown, we were struggling to find staff to manage one of my smaller town shops. We closed that down and we've just expanded the other three. So we've got Swansea, Llanelli and Ammonford. And I've got a great team working with me and I've got great friends who have worked with me in the past who've also gone on to open up their own shops, gone on to have their own careers, and I've, I've trained people to win competitions. And now it's not, it's not all about me, you know, I, I, as, as well as, as much as I love competing, um, I love more seeing other people progress and do well. So as well as opening shops, I've helped other people compete in the industry and do really well for themselves. And I've created the Barber Coach TV so then I can provide all this experience and knowledge to you and to help you along on your journey. So I hope you enjoy it. I'm approachable, please message me whether it's on social media or if you want to send an email into the Barber Coach TV, please get in touch. If you have any feedback, we'd, I'd be really grateful to hear it. If you're enjoying, please leave a review. You can leave a review on the Barber Coach TV if you click on the, the sign up section. Even if you are already a member, go to the homepage, click the sign up section and then in there then underneath the option to sign up, you've got description and review. You can leave a review there and if you'd like to leave a review on Google, I would be very, very grateful. I hope you're enjoying the Barber Coach TV. I hope it's helping you. And um, and I'm, I'm really excited that there's going to be a lot more big things coming soon. We've got a lot of other educators joining us with a lot of amazing information to bring to the table. And I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. I honestly believe this is going to be big and I'd love you to be a part of it. Thank you very much.